But what you have created is something that no one has ever done before. Because first of all, you have essentially the best of the best of a free sprung balance wheel. But then on top of that, you have a micro regulating system that actually changes the stiffness of the hairspring. Bro, how did yeah. you do this? Explain this to me. <laughs> okay. What's going on guys, Waco from Revolution, here with Greg Kissling, VP of Products at Omega, and a buddy of mine, and something of a legend in the watch community. How are you, sir? Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you. Good so to see you. I want to congratulate you on this incredible achievement on the uh, new Speedmaster Super Racing, specifically the Spirit system, right? The Spirit, yes. So let's talk about this because it is just mind blowing, right? Like, okay, so I understand that there's two systems in terms of how uh, uh, watches are regulated, right? So you've got a free sprung balance wheel where it's just basically these inertia screws that you're adjusting on exactly. that. Exactly. But there's certain limits to which how much you can adjust it as well, yeah. right? We are talking about the finesse. Exactly. Yeah, in our case, it's plus minus one second a day. Plus minus one second a day. Or also there's a option to change the active length of the spiral itself, yeah. and that's called a regulator, like a swan egg, for example. Exactly. But that has some limitations as well. So for example, on a, a watch with a regulator, um, when amplitude is low, for example, there's not significant difference in terms of the active length of the, uh, of the hairspring. Right? Correct. Yep. But what you have created is something that no one has ever done before, because first of all, you have essentially the best of the best of a free sprung balance wheel. But then on top of that, you have a micro regulating system that actually changes the stiffness of the hairspring. Bro, how yep. did you do this? Explain this to me. <laughs> okay. So we decided really to, to find another way, a new way of fine tuning or I should say ultra fine tuning the rate. Uh, we wanted really to pay tribute on our movement. Uh, the, our movement are so stable, are so reliable and if you talk about chronometric performance, they are so precise, so accurate. But the, the system we, we had until today, it was only regulating the rate with the screws that has a finesse of plus minus one seconds a day. Which is to be fair, is actually quite impressive. Right? Quite impressive. Yeah. But if you want to go, you know, in a more tiny range, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had to reinvent the wheel. Right. So we were looking for a new system. And instead of tuning the inertia of the balance wheel, we tune the stiffness of the spring that has a very specific geometry. Uh, actually, the Spirit system is like two springs mounted in series. Wow. You have the first spring that, is, that has the same design as a, a standard spring. And then we added a flexible blade. And by tuning the stiffness of this flexible blade, we can tune the rate of the, of the movement. That's incredible. And through the magic of editing, suddenly the, the, <laughs> the, the bladed system is here. Yeah. Now, talk to me a little bit about this. First of all, the material is silicone, right? And, and, would, and would you say silicone gave you the ability to create something yeah. that was so complex? Not only the silicone, but the process of producing a silicone spring. The process is named DRIE. Deep reactive ion etching. Exactly. Right. And this kind of process allows us to use any kind of geometry. We have a total geometric freedom. And this is why we came out with this idea of creating the spiral in silicone 2.0. Wow. <laughs> so we have here this, the, the first spiral right. that has a specific stiffness. And then we add another stiffness that is linked to this flexible blade. Okay. So we modulate the stiffness of this flexible blade by acting on the loading beam. And this loading beam is linked to the rate mobile stud order. That's incredible. So <clears throat> talk to me a little bit about like, so you're not changing the active length of this at all. No. All you're no. doing is exactly. compressing or decompressing that we, blade. Exactly. We modulate the stiffness of this flexible blade by acting either a force of traction. If we have a force of traction on this flexible blade, we therefore increase the frequency of this, the balance wheel. And by increasing the frequency of the balance wheel, 
we therefore increase the rate. By producing a force of compression on this flexible blade, we reduce the stiffness of the blade. By reducing the stiffness of this flexible blade, we reduce or we decrease the frequency of the balance wheel and by decreasing the frequency of the balance wheel, we therefore decrease the rate. That's so cool. Okay, now we're gonna show you what that mechanism looks like. Through the magic of editing, it's now going to appear in front of your eyes. Okay. So Greg, you know, what we can see here is just part of that hairspring, exactly. which is underneath this full traversing balance bridge. Exactly. Right. And then here you have the micro adjustment system. What, what do you call this, incidentally? The tuner. The tuner, the I tuner. like it. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, when you turn it clockwise, yeah. you decrease the stiffness of the hairspring. Exactly. Yeah, you have the S as slow, so you decrease the stiffness and therefore you, you decrease the rate. And then if you turn it uh, counterclockwise, you're increasing the stiffness exactly. of that. Exactly. And, and what is that part of the hairspring, the outer curve, or that loading beam, what is that attached to? So, this loading beam, right. you see here, is attached to the rate mobile stud ah, order. Ah, okay. And this is why you have plus one that is linked to the tuner in terms of design. And the embedding point of the spiral, or the spiral, I should say, is fixed to the stud that is linked to the beat error mobile stud. Right. Yeah. Which you, you use, you fix first the beat error mobile stud. Exactly. And you put on the blocker, and then you fix this, correct? Correct. Yeah. And so but to, to, to adjust the beat error, you have to remove the blocker, then you turn the entire system. When you are into the beat at zero, you block the blocker with that screw, and then you can start fine-tuning your rate. Okay, I'm starting to go like nerding out here big time, but am I, if I'm not mistaken, basically you are, are first adjusting the screws on this oscillator exactly. to the rate of plus or minus one second as you would for a free-sprung oscillated movement, right? Exactly. And then that's actually set to cost first, right? Correct, yes. And then when it comes back, then you start to use the fine adjustment mechanism to get to yeah. what, what level of finesse? Can you Firstly, we do the assembly of the watch. Okay, so. Uh, because it happens sometimes when you do the assembly with the movement, the rate is not anymore the same. Right. So we do the adjustment if needed. We do the adjustment of the ultra fine tuning with the spirit system after the encasing. Okay. And then the target is clear. Plus one seconds a day with the finesse of plus minus 0 0.1 seconds a day. But what does that mean? The, the finesse the of finesse, your... Yes. The resolution of the mechanism. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and you were saying that um, what's great about this is also for the client, um, if a watch becomes you know, sort of slightly out of sync for whatever reason, they can go back to the shop and the person who's qualified can just using yeah. the tuner, get it back to spot on in terms of yeah. rate. You right? have to be qualified, of course, right. to do a, a kind of service, but uh, uh, the act of Fine-tuning the rate is quite easy with that system. Yes. You know, Greg, what I love about it is, you know, this is clearly a mechanical watch, right? It is. But if you look at this mechanism here with the spirit and also the coaxial and all of this mechanism, it is the biggest departure, the greatest innovation in terms of mechanical watchmaking today. I mean, tell me why this is at the essence of Omega and as Reynolds said, this is what gives emotion to Omega. Yeah, this is probably our, you know, mission to push the boundaries and uh, to look for new techniques to use the innovation. You know, thanks to the silicon process, we could imagine the spiral of tomorrow. And uh, our goal was really to improve our movement, improve our quest of precision, our quest of excellence, and I think we, 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 we found a fantastic solution. <laughs> well, I guess the last question we have, and I think you guys alluded to it during the question and answer session, was this amazing mechanism is appearing first in this incredible watch, but it is something that we can look forward to seeing in other Omega yeah. calibers, right? Exactly. The, we, we did the same exercise with the coaxial. Right. We started with some limited edition, and then we came out with different actual movement for different watches. We did the same with the Master Chronometer certification. We started with one model and then we introduced that technology into our entire collection. And yeah, the Spirit has a big future. I'm 
we are pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last thing I want to ask is, is we live in a world where electronic devices are pervasive and everything is almost blasting time at us all the time. This is old school mechanical watchmaking, but you are now taking it to the highest level possible. You're pushing the boundaries to the greatest point. Why is that important for Omega? I think it's part of our values, yes. We are looking always into this quest of excellence, into this quest of precision, and we have all the facilities. Omega is part of the Swatch Group, and the Swatch Group has many manufacturers, many, uh, many societies that are able, you know, not only to develop, but also to produce the different parts. It's not just a spiral, it's also the actuator or, or the system itself. Amazing. Greg, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Guys, thank you for tuning in to part two. And, thank uh, you, Wei. I'm looking forward to having a, a Negroni with you now. Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, we love. Well done, guys. <laughs> Cheers. You.